So this is the second uh, video in a, in a range of videos that I plan to make uh, testing myself and also going through all the linear algebra books uh, for the same concepts as I go through uh, and work through FIS. Uh, there are multiple purposes of, uh, for this. Of course, the first one is to test myself. Uh, the second one is really, I'm not sure if my uh, the only two books that I will do before I go into abstract algebra are going to be uh, Anton and FIS only. I'm not sure if there's a third or a fourth book before I go into abstract algebra. I have other reasons. I'll think of them as I go along. Uh, this is here as a prop, uh, but it's going to say something uh, near the end of the video. So then I would, I'm going to start the, the, this, uh, this particular video, which is about the uh, row space, column space, null space, and the left null space, which is discussed in Strang and Agarwal. But I did not, I don't think I found it in any of my other books. Which of course means that you can learn all the al linear algebra you want without discussing it, but some people do. Uh, so anyways, in the case of Anton, he tells you about the row space, column space, and null space, and explains what they are with examples. And then, uh, but then at some point, uh, he gets down to business by comparing it, the different views by which these uh, spaces are described. Now I'm going to zoom in, and I better remember to zoom out, because if not, it's going to not be good for, your, for my viewers. So the matrix view says it's the null space of A. The system view says it's the solution space of AX is equal to zero, the zero vector. A is a matrix, X is a vector. The transformation view says it's the kernel of the uh, transformation of the matrix A. Then, for the column space of A, the matrix view, that's what it's called, but in the system view, it's the whole B vector in the, in the destination, the range uh, vector space for which AX is equal to the B vector. And it has to have a consistent solution. Then the transformation view is the range of T of A. Okay, so and one thing that happens in Anton, and I will remember to zoom out a little for this one, and hopefully continue to do that correctly. Uh, one thing that I want to do as a segue, because I want I want to get to this at some point, and I don't know how to treat it because it's so unique to Anton, and that's one thing that I wanted to mention as well. I'll use this example to to talk about how these books do linear algebra. I'm finding as I go through them, and this is why I want to go through this exercise of making multiple videos going through the major topics of linear algebra, as I learned them in FIS, is uh, it's really a manifold. It's really like a 10-dimensional space of all the different topics in linear algebra and how you could discuss them from the perspective of somebody who knows all of, all of them, which some of these, many of these authors do. But you'll see these authors go and make cuts through this space of concepts in different ways. So for example, uh, Strang has his own unique way of going through linear algebra, which I find really, really good. Uh, and, uh, and, the, and also Anton. Anton builds up this uh, equivalent statement, which I used a lot when I was working on problems, where if, especially, if the determinant of, the, of your matrix was not equal to zero, of course you had a square matrix, all these things were true, all of them. And from all of these, all these different concepts, allow you to do all kinds of things with a square matrix. Okay, so and also, so I'll move on to, uh, I'll move on to Strang, but uh, I have to say, <clears throat> one thing that I'm finding out, because this is the second video, like this one that I make, and I've made uh, videos of concepts in books before, but these are particularly complex to make uh, because if there's just a lot to them, and I think I have a much nicer selection of linear algebra books than I did uh, before uh, for, say, uh, analysis. Th th that was the case when I did some uh, videos like this one. So hopefully I'll get better at them. I'm going to apologize in advance if I do something stupid because uh, it's particularly difficult. And actually, I th this is the reason why I'm going to have to start editing at some point. I'm going to have to make time for it. I'm not sure when, uh, because it's very hard to pull off one of these videos without editing. At some point, you can easily make a mistake. So, 
Uh, Strang talks about the four fundamental subspaces, and he lists them as the column space, null space, row space, and the left null space, which again I mentioned before, uh, nobody uh, that I've seen discusses. So, so it, it's instead of a y is equal to zero, is the transpose of a is equal to zero. There you have it. Uh, you see, also, he also discusses the column space and the null space at a, at a fundamental level, the same way as Anton does before he gets into the nitty-gritty of what they are. So he does, both authors do the same thing. But in the case of Anton, I mean, I'm sorry, of Strang, he's got a very nice geometrical way of explaining all of these four spaces. The column space, the null space of A transpose, the null space of A, and uh, where is it? Yeah, that's it. There's four of them. And AX equals B. Yes, of course. Which is the column space. I'm sorry. You see how it tracks out. The row space. Yeah, the row space. All right, so that is Strang. Then let's head out to page 107. Yeah, so he's got also some good examples here. And he also has on page 144, page 144, some additional examples and says something that I like. So the important orthogonal subspaces don't come by accident and they come two at a time. In fact, orthogonal subspaces are unavoidable. They're the fundamental subspaces, those four that he mentioned before. The first spa uh, pair is the null space and row space. I got that right when I was looking at that figure for the fourth one. Um, those are subspaces of R to the N, the, the domain. The rows have N components and so does the vector X in AX is equal to zero. We have to show using AX equals to zero that the rows of A are orthogonal to the null space vector X. Strang. Strang is really great. Okay, so then now I'm going to go through a range, the range of the theory books, the math major books, and you will see that there's, a, there's varying ways in which the subject is not discussed. And I think the reason why I believe, again, I'm just coming up with my own reason, is that all of these books are second books for linear algebra, and they're not, they're not going to spoon feed the student with basic concepts that, as you've seen, are discussed uh, in detail in books like Anton and Strang. So here's null spaces and ranges, but of course, in the case of Axler, which works for Axler, uh, it's all caged within the, the terminology that he uses, such as the L, the vector space of all linear transformations, and it fits his own narrative using those concepts. So, that's just the way Axler chose to do it. Then, in the case of Lang, it's yet another variation on that theme. If we go to Lang, uh, page 124 at the top, he mentions the null space in a way that I think I have no way of knowing what it really means unless I read all of these pages and then figure out what he said, frankly. That's all I have to say because he's talking about an element, he's talking about a scalar product, and then it's null, and that's the null space. I would have to read a lot and figure out within the way his terms work what that means. Uh, in the case of, uh, of Hoffman and Kuhn's, and I'm going to continue to pronounce it as Hoffman and Kuhn's even if it's a crime against humanity, um, the bottom of page 38, in the case of Hoffman and Kuhn's, they mention the spaces with examples very briefly, not in any way the way, uh, the way Anton and Strang would do it, and then they also mention and define in a theorem the null space and connect it immediately to the nullity. And this is something that is broken up in the more introductory uh, books. So those three are kind of like 
<laughs> by the time you get to them you should know what these things are and they expect you to. Now in the case of Golub, I actually found some interesting things about null spaces and spaces in general in two of the application books. Uh, in the case of um, this is Golub, right? Yeah. Golub and, Lo and Van Loan. <coughs> of course, this would take somebody a lot of time to get to with a lot of code because it's towards the end of a book that's all without, filled with algorithms. Uh, so you'd have to write a lot of Python or MATLAB to get to this point. But uh, Golub and Van Loan have a re really nice section of computing subspaces uh, with the uh, singular vector decomposition, if you can believe that. And I love SVD, and I want to do a lot more of it. So now I know that there's intersection of null spaces, angles between subspaces, all with algorithms in this great book. Intersection of subspaces. Yeah, so there you have it. And then Agarwal, which I barely mentioned in the first, uh, in the first video, also has a nice definition for row spaces and column spaces, null space, left null space, and has a diagram very much like the one that you find in Strang. So actually, that's pretty good. Uh, one thing that that uh, that Agarwal mentions, and it's sort of like a, a follow-up later, and I think it's treated a little later in FIS, so I'll come to it, and I'll pro it'll probably be part of another video in this series later on, is he makes this statement. And I'm going to zoom in and remember to zoom out. I'm saying that just so I remember to zoom out. A remarkable result in linear algebra is that the dimensionality of the row space, also referred to as the row rank, and that of the column space, also referred to as column rank, of any n by d matrix A is the same. So, and I'm, and I'm, going, to, I'm going to go into dimensionality and look at various books at some point soon, but this... I think it's treated later in FIS, but I'm going to make a mental note because I think that's a very interesting result and I want to dig into it further. Just putting in a mental note for myself. And then the final appearance of Halmus, and I'm going to zoom out because I always forget. And then this is going to be in page 88. Thomas has a warning when he discusses range and null space. Of course, his terminology, his terms are archaic. He writes in symbols that nobody uses anymore. And I'll, I'll, I don't know when I'll get around to reading this book, but I think I would love to read this whole book. It, it'll be very, very hard just because I'll have to figure out all the terms. Uh, and I think, I think this book can be like my fifth linear algebra book if I ever get to it, because I'll have to really understand linear algebra deeply enough where I know, I'll know, it's like, oh, that's what he means. I can substitute all the terms with something that I've read before. He's got a warning that I don't really understand, but I'm going to put it in this video just so that I can remember later on to see what, the, what it is that he's talking about. He says, warning, it is accidental that the projection, uh, the range, uh, direct sum with the null space is equal to your whole vector space. Uh, in general, it need not even be true that R is equal to the range of A and N is the, is the, uh, n the null space of A are disjoint. Of course, this direct sum uh, term, me, uh, symbol means that those two sets don't intersect. They're completely disjoint. It can happen, for example, that for a certain ve vector X, we have X is not equal to zero, AX is not equal to zero, and A squared X is equal to zero. For such a vector, AX clearly belongs to both the range and the null space of A. Mic drop. I have no idea what this means. I'm just putting it here as an end to this video. Uh, maybe for future. Uh, I'll figure it out someday. And that is Helmus.